Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to I accidentally deleted this part of the clip in my video and now I have to refilm it. In today's video, obviously, we're gonna be moving Jelly and Otis outside and we're also gonna be cleaning the Beretti enclosure. Little butternut needs his tub cleaned. Now before we get started with today's video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification thingy. If you like putting objects on your body, hit the link right up over here and head over to my Teespring where I've made some cool designs of some shirts that I think you guys will enjoy. It also helps to support the channel and it helps me afford things for my turts because they are needy little kids. If you want to go the extra mile to help support me and help support the channel, hit the link right up over here and head over to my Patreon. Over there you get behind the scenes access to all kinds of things. You can, who's making noises? You can get phone calls with me. I'll answer all of your questions. You get videos a day early and all kinds of other fun stuff. Just go over there and check it out. It's the link up there. Now with that fun stuff out of the way, the stuff that helps me keep this channel running, let's take a look at these animals first and the enclosures. They really quick check out the baby spotted turtles. So I had them eating a lot over the weekend, which is really awesome. So I think that they're starting to get accustomed to me and people. Okay, so both setups for Jelly and Otis up here and Butternut down here are very, very similar. We have a basic heat lamp. Well, this one only has UVB because the heat actually comes from the lamp down here. The heat rises and it heats up that little corner. I keep this enclosure really, oops. I keep this enclosure really, really simple just to avoid any like, I don't know, bacteria and just limit as much as possible anything that can go wrong. That's why I keep the water really shallow. Berettis are known to flip themselves over and drown, which is not cool. Luckily, the sloped walls, though, make it so that he can't really just, like, go up the wall and, like, flip himself over, which is kind of awesome. The enclosure up here is just a more aquatic version of the one down there. Normally, this is a land section that's partitioned off, but as you can see, they have clearly dragged a lot of that sphagnum moss back here. We have a little hide right here. Jelly spends most of his time over here. Otis most of his time over here. But as you can see, they'll sort of cross over every once in a while, especially when they're looking for food. I feed them over on this side where the pump is. I'm thinking maybe we might overhaul this entire thing and take the whole thing outside to clean it. Because the thing is, if I'm gonna take these guys and take them outside, like what's the point in cleaning and getting the whole enclosure ready if I'm just gonna tear it down anyway when I bring them outside. So I need to make that decision today as well. For now though, we can get started with the little Beretti here. This is normally what I keep the Beretti in, but I need to wash it out to keep it biosecure, to make it clean, sterile basically, so that way I'm not cross-contaminating with these guys because some of their water was in this. And now we're gonna use just a little bit of Dawn dish soap. Try this thing out. Voila, all done. Let's go. While we're at it, I'm gonna fill this with fresh water, dechlorinated, like distilled water, like literally drinking water. And I'm gonna add it just a little bit into this enclosure so that way we can feed and soak him. Some for me first. And the rest is for him. That should be enough. Pull this off of here. Hello, mister, how are you doing? He's already coming out. Looks like he might be a little hungry. Let's take a look at him though. I need to make sure that he's not getting too fat. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, you got an attitude today. So normally he just hides himself, but now he's so confident he is trying to run. That's interesting. Okay, all right. He's also got very sharp claws. Very interesting. This guy might be ready for an outdoor enclosure probably within a year, maybe two. We haven't given this guy any Missouri tortoise diet in a while. Just four nugs. We're also gonna sprinkle just a little bit of calcium powder in here. That way he eats a little bit of it. Also, if he takes a drink, that way he'll get a little calcium supplement. Then we'll toss in just a little bit of the normal pellets. All right, mister, let's roll. Come on, easy, easy, easy. Relax, relax. There he goes. So he starts freaking out until he sees the food. And then he's like, oh, oh, everything's fine. Now while he eats that, we must clean out this. Let me pull this thing out as well. Toss it right here. Enemy spotted. Uh-oh. I just found that was disgusting. That was disgusting. It's still moving. It's still moving. It's still moving. I just crushed it and it's still moving. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do with this. I have some very hungry little feeder fish that would absolutely love the chance to eat a beetle. All right, ready folks? Watch this. There, they just took him down. No bugs, no nothing. Good, beautiful. Let's take this out.
Welcome back to Dan Rinses Things. That's done. That's clean. I mean, it's just a tub with sphagnum moss. There's not much to it. And I think we are definitely going to be moving Otis and Jelly back into here. I did have a problem with it because this doesn't get full sunlight. But even when this thing is in the shade, like, it's still getting UVB. It's still getting light. You know how, like, you can still get sunburnt on a cloudy day? It's the same type of thing. I'm now going to add my sphagnum moss outside so I don't make a mess indoors. Cool, and now this whole thing is ready to come back inside and be filled with a little bit of water. All right, this enclosure is all done. I was gonna consider putting butternut outside, but you know what? It's a little bit too, not cold, but it's gonna be in the 50s for a couple nights, which I don't like. As a box turtle, he could really easily take those temperatures, but because he's so stinking stupid rare, I just, I don't wanna risk it. I'd rather wait till it's 60s at night, 70s and 80s during the day, which should be next week or so. We can see that he's made a stinking mess, but at least he ate all of his food and he looks happy and really, really healthy. Yeah, so now when I pick him up, his reaction is not to hide. His reaction is get me out of here. All right, all right, here you go. Nice and clean for you. There we go. Beretti's drown is what the breeder told me. He reiterated a hundred times. He said, Beretti's drown, Beretti's drown. You know, not too much water. And we're gonna take all this and probably just dump it out somewhere. I don't really know where. Uh, maybe I'll just drink it. Don't, don't eat your turtle food. <sighs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'm stupid. Not that stupid. I just finished lunch and taking the puppy out. So we are ready to get started with our next project. This tub I've measured to be about two feet by three feet, which I used to not want to put it in the enclosure that I had Otis and Jelly in because I was afraid that it was too big, but they are really, really content living in this as it is right now. So anything that I give them additional to this is going to be like extra. So that's what we're going to do. With that being said, I'm going to go outside and begin digging out the spot for this before I tear it all apart. Let's get on our expert digging shoes. Hello, turtles. Oh, sorry. Pancake, why are you in the mini pond, you weirdo? Well, you guys are not the focus right now. We need this shovel. Okay, so this is what I mean when I say that this thing doesn't really get direct sunlight, but I think it's a better thing because if they got direct sunlight, I would basically need a lot of shade and a lot of shade cloth just to make sure that they don't overheat because spotted turtles in particular do not do well with really, really hot water. I have a sprinkler head, which is really nice right here my dad put up a, an extension on here so that way it can shoot we can shoot is that a horse fly that thing just landed on me buddy if you bite me or you try to bite me you're gonna have a bad time oh no 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 I'm gonna go get the tub and get Jelly and Otis and see if I can just kind of fit this in because I have a hard time like measuring things out. I'm also hitting a pipe right there. There's another irrigation pipe right there that leads to the sprinkler. So just a couple of problems-ish. Uh, rather than dig down further, I'm gonna take all this dirt and build all the other areas up. In order to do that, I wanna get the actual tub and sort of fit it like in and see where exactly I need to dig. So I'm not just digging aimlessly. After a quick test, I believe without the bricks in this, I should be able to lift this entire thing and just take it directly outside, which is ideal rather than needing to take out like all of the little decorations and all of the things, pulling out the turtles, blah, 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 blah. There will be no cinematic sequence for taking this tub outside because it's gonna be heavy. Those two I wanna keep here so that way they're safe. And this, I need to take out the fish that are in here because I refuse to just dump it out. A lot of people would just dump them out and forget the fish, but I, I just, my conscious, I can't do that. So we're gonna drag this out in the sun and fish out the fish, get this cleaned up and get it in place. Well, that is my fault for putting the fish in an enclosed space with the turtles. I think that's the last of them that uh, Mr. Jelly there just consumed. Whoops. In other news, my tub is cleaned and it's time to get this thing fitted and in its new little position. Our final resting place has been found. Time to backfill the whole thing. Now, turtle nerds, here comes the fun part of the enclosure building process. I have this beautiful blank slate now that I get to decorate and make look more natural for the turtles. And I want to sort of continue the hostas that we have here. There's one back there, two here. So I might run to a nursery really quickly and get a hosta for like up in the corner or somewhere in here. And then we get to throw in like the hide and whatnot. And you know, this little piece of wood that I have right here. Maybe I'll just kind of you know, toss it like that. But yeah, this is basically the fun part. I'm gonna throw these two slabs of wood back here to close it back up and maybe go run to the nursery and see what kind of plants I can get. The nursery two minutes away from my house closes at 
4 o'clock. It is 3.50. So we are rushing to go get there. I'm going to see if I can't make it. And I'm driving now, so I need to go. Bye. So we got this little thing, which is just like the cutest little plant in the world. I'm a sucker for small creeping plants with little leaves. And we got this little hosta here. I grabbed some elephant ears from the pond. I put them right here. Some of them I planted in the water. Some of them I'm going to try to have floating. We have a little ramp right here so they can climb on out. Let's first throw in this sphagnum moss. And that should just soak and make a nice little layer at the bottom for jelly to... Did y'all just hear that? That was a frog. <laughs> All right, jelly. I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay. Here you go, buddy. Go ahead. The world is your oyster, buddy. Go on in, the water's nice. Awesome. All right, let's get Otis in here. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh, awesome, we're gonna get Otis in here, but he's not too chunky. If a box turtle is too fat, they won't be able to close all the way, but check this out. This is what these guys are made for. They are made for closing up all the way. Check that out. We're gonna put him just like that. And he's just gonna make his way. He's probably, like I'm telling you right now, he's gonna take his sweet time before he decides to move and run somewhere. As I like to do when first introducing animals to a new enclosure, let's see if these guys will eat a little bit. Yep, just as I thought, he is gonna eat. And there's Otis who can smell the food. So we're gonna see if maybe he'll come eat it. <laughs> Otis is going to eat as well, that's awesome. Definitely a good sign from these little buggers. Awesome, this is what I love to see. I am well past my own allotted filming time, so thank you all so much for watching and I'll see y'all tomorrow.